Traumatic elbow instability. This is part three of our uh, lecture from the OTA core curriculum resident lecture series, version four by Dr. David Ring. I'm Sakib Rahman narrating. And uh, in our last video, we talked mostly about terrible triad and coronoid fractures, radial head fractures. In the last video, we're going to talk about olecranon or proximal ulna fracture dislocations. So these can occur anterior or, or posterior. Um, and a little bit of semantics here. Um, in Dr. Ring's slides, you, this is being referred to as the transolecranon or olecranon fracture dislocations. Some surgeons prefer to call this proximal ulna fractures and make note that you know, the olecranon really is you know, just this very proximal portion of the uh, ulna and that these fracture patterns typically occur with a very large um, proximal ulna fragment and um, they are really more than just an olecranon, and they behave differently than an olecranon avulsion fracture, which is true. Um, and important to keep in mind is, as opposed to the terrible triads, for instance, where you have significant ligament injury that contributes to persistent instability, in these cases, the ligaments um, are only partially injured, and a lot of times by restoring the bony injuries, you can restore sufficient stability. So here's a posterior injury pattern where you have the radial head actually sitting posteriorly. And again, the ligaments can still be intact. And again, the ulna humeral relationship to some degree is maintained, although obviously there's significant fracture. So it's a little different than you know, uh, what you're dealing with with your terrible triads. Principles of treatment are restore contour and dimensions of the trochlear notch. Uh, use a contour dorsal plate. Again, this is not an olecranon fracture where you just go in and do a tension band, right? So these are not acting like avulsions. You're not trying to do that. You're oftentimes reconstructing a complex fracture, and in those cases, you need a plate. Um, and sometimes you're even bridge plating these. So some treatment tips by Dr. Ring. Uh, if you have to, consider pinning the olecranon to the trochlea to sort of control that proximal fragment. So here I would say there's maybe this is that pin there. Consider a temporary fixator, or in this case, a distractor is being used to help gain length for complex fractures. Um, the coronoid, I would agree with this. If you have this wide open fracture, you can go through the fracture to address the coronoid first. Uh, alternatively, um, if you have a radial head fracture and you're going through a lateral window, you can go through the Kaplan interval or one of the lateral intervals and um, Go th you know past the radial head fractures first if there is a radial head fracture address the coronoid and then deal with the radial head on the way out. Alternatively, if you're going medially, like if you have a large fracture as shown in the previous video, uh, you may have to go medially elevate the flexor pronator mass and come up on top of the fracture that way, uh, and then you um, fix that and then fix the olecranon on, or and the proximal ulna on the way out. And uh, again, I think this is mentioned here because um, as opposed to hinged X fixes and being paranoid about resubluxation and dislocation with simple elbow dislocations and terrible triad injuries, with these, it's mostly bony injury that you're treating. And once you treat it, you should be able to start moving the elbow a, a little bit sooner. Here you can see very nasty injury, complex fracture, um, radial heads anterior, uh, exposed through a long posterior approach. Uh, and again, here, if you need to, you can get to the coronoid, um, address that, and then with combination, in this case, wire technique and dorsal plating. And of course, there was a radial shaft fracture. Uh, this can be effectively treated with relatively satisfactory result. I mean, of course, it's very difficult to get full motion. I mean, you can see that there's you know, good supination, not full, and then good elbow flexion, but extension is limited. Um, but um, these are very difficult injuries to get full motion because of the scarring in particular. And sometimes removing hardware and elbow releases could be needed down the road. So here you can see another case, uh, proximal ulna, fracture dislocation, the radial head appears to be fracture dislocated. And in this particular case, you can see radial head actually needed to be replaced. And then the proximal ulna is repaired with standard osteosynthesis techniques and making sure that you capture the coronoid and uh, 
again, you can achieve relatively satisfactory, uh, stable result. And again, uh, I would refer you to uh, the video on the case presentations of uh, elbow fracture dislocations. On it's a video on the uh, OrthoClips website to look at some more cases like this. Um, so exercises during recovery. If the LCL is injured, uh, avoid various stress uh, for three to four weeks. And I'm talking about all traumatic elbow instability uh, here. Um, uh, or fracture dislocations. If fixation is tenuous, a three to four week of immobilization uh, is acceptable, but of course with modern techniques, blocked plating, and this is becoming less and less of a, a, of a concern, but again, an osteoporotic bone, it still can be. Um, active self-assisted elbow flexion, extension, and, and uh, form rotation are, are key. You can't forget these uh, during their rehab and um, encourage patients to get into a healthy stretch mindset. Of course it hurts, that's the problem, and that's why patients typically hold off on moving. Um, but if they understand that some pain in a controlled setting might be okay uh, to prevent stiffness, then um, that can help them. So in summary for this lecture, the lateral collateral ligament with traumatic elbow instability is more important than the MCL. Uh, the ligaments will heal if you keep the elbow concentric even when treated late. Um, so above all, you want to get the elbow reduced on, at all means, even if it involves immobilizing them, putting a static X-fix uh, if necessary. Uh, active motion can add to stability, uh, although you want to avoid various stresses. Uh, and even a small coronoid fracture can be a problem. And you got to make sure you understand what kind of coronoid fracture you're dealing with. And that's where CT scanning and 3D recons can really help. So kind of sum it up again. This was the, the vi uh, slide from the end of the first video. Um, pa patterns of traumatic elbow instability with fracture. You sort of have the dislocation injuries where you have substantial uh, ligament injury. And then you have your disruption injuries uh, where some of the ligaments can still be intact and the ulnar humeral relationships can be maintained, although with a bad posteromedial rotational instability, um, you know, you can end up fairly subluxed if you miss that injury, as shown in the case um, from the second video. This is a complex topic. I uh, certainly would refer you to... Um, some of the uh, review papers that are out there uh, to dig a little bit deeper uh, into this uh, topic. Um, these are both uh, original studies and some um, review papers that Dr. Ring has posted here for you. Thank you very much.